To God be the glory. Let all of God's people say praise God. Yes, we praise God even in the midst of the storm. That's what we do. When God does not move the mountain, we ask God to move. When God does not answer the prayer that we asked, when God does not give us the miracle we want, we say we praise God even in the midst of the storm. The test of our faith, my brothers and my sisters, it is not whether God has answered our prayer. Yes, sometimes we encourage you to have faith in the promises of God. Stand on the promises of God because God is always faithful. But the test of our faith, are we still going to trust God when God does not give us the miracle that we want? Are we still going to believe what God says? Last week was a challenging week for me as a pastor. For 26 years in my ministry, I've never done a funeral of a baby. Never. You know, it's easy to do a funeral of a grown-up where you come and say, this person has lived a good life. You know, they are resting in the Lord. But for a baby, why? Why? And we all have these why questions. We ask ourselves questions. Why? God, why did you do this? Why me? Why is this happening to me? We have many questions that we ask. The why question. Even Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, did ask why. God, why have you forsaken me? There are those moments in our life where these why questions are even unanswered. But now I'm encouraged because as I read a scripture and as I stand before the Lord, I'm learning, I'm learning to move from why to how. Instead of asking why, I'm learning to ask God how. Will this glorify your name? How will this bring glory to your name? Listen, my brothers and my sisters. When we talk about the big picture, you know, as we have started our study of land, one of the things that it starts, one of the great principles of our life is to realize that it all starts with God. It all starts with God. And, you know, to be honest with you, I did not like that when I read that sentence that says, it's not about me. It is not about you. Do you even realize, even the prayer that we pray is not about us, it's about God. And when God answers our prayers, somehow our prayers fit in the will of God, and God moves because it all starts with God. God is on the throne. God is sovereign. We as God's people, my brothers and my sisters, must learn to trust in what we call God's sovereign control over the event in our lives. Sometimes they don't make sense. And we human beings have a problem because once we have no control over something, really we lose it. God's plan, my brothers and my sisters, as we realize in the big picture, we understand it's all start with God and it is not about me. It is not about me and it has never been about me. Remember, it's not about you. It's about God. That God has a plan for each person here on earth. God has a plan for every family. God has a plan for every individual. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, sometimes we may ask ourselves questions, where is God when I'm going through a difficult time? 
But have you ever asked yourself a question, where is God, when also, when everything was going on well? Because God is still on the throne. In the big picture, we start by realizing that it is all about God. It's all about God. Personally, I did not like this. <laughs> I don't know about you. What was your experience when you read and you realized it is, was not about you? It will never be about you. It is all about God. That God, the Lord, has made everything for his own purpose. That God has created everything. Sometimes, very challenging text in Proverbs, it says even the evil ones. God made everything with a place and a purpose. Even the wicked are included. How do you understand that? Now, how do you explain that? That God made everything for his own purpose, even the wicked for the day of disaster. So the answer is God is on the throne and God decides to do what God wants to do. My brothers and my sisters, we have been given the privilege to be alive today. Because you see, life is a matter of a second, a minute, a day, a week, a month, a year. The question becomes, what is it that we are doing with what God has given us? We all know how we came. We don't know when we are going to leave. There are those who came and just spent one week, two weeks, one month, one year, 20 years, 30 years, some 50, some 70. We don't know. We don't have control over how long we will be here on earth. That becomes that that question, why on earth am I here? Why is it that God is giving me an opportunity to witness today's uh, uh, life? Well, what is it that God wants to do with my life? And many times we get caught up into this question of why instead of being concerned about the question of how. And now that is a difficult question. When things go well, we can understand this is for the glory of God. But when things go bad, how will that bad experience, how does my loss, my disappointment can be used for the glory of God? Listen, one day Jesus met a blind man. In the Gospel of John chapter 9 verse 3, there was a blind man who showed up and Jesus was asked to pray for the blind man. And Jesus prayed for the blind man, and the blind man recovered his sight. The disciples came to Jesus and asked Jesus, why was this man born blind? Why? Did the, the parents sin? Is it some kind of curse upon this family? Why this man was born blind? Jesus answered the question, by saying it is for the glory of God, the greater purpose of God. Jesus helped them move from why to how. How is the situation bring glory to God? We people, we ask this question of why. Yet Jesus is inviting us to find how. How? How do we understand how does this Glorify God in our lives. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, we find that. Paul struggled with this and come with this conclusion that all things work for good for those who love God. I know this text is good when things are okay. When everything is okay, your health is okay, your children are okay. You have a good job. Your bills are paid. It's easy to read this text with excitement. But when things are not going the way I planned them to be, when things are so bad, when I've lost, when I've experienced the most disappointment time of my life, how can this text, all things work together? Oh, my brothers and my sisters, our maturity in the Lord when we begin to look at life from a divine perspective, 
Oh, you know, one of the points that we have studied today that we are reading, in fact, for day five. Come on, come on. Anybody read already day five? Come on, come on, come on. When do you do your devotion? Come on, come on, day five. Come on, day five. Seeing from God's perspective. Seeing life from God's point of view. This was day five for today. What was day one? Day one? Day one? Come on. I know you can cheat a little bit. You can, huh? It all starts with God, day one. Day two? Come on, come on. You are not an accident. Day three? What drives your life? And day four? All right, made to last forever. Okay? And day five was looking at life, uh, seeing life from God's point of view. All right, come on, somebody. We post those things. They are on Facebook. Every day we post for a lesson from the 40 days. You have your book. Try to read them, okay? And remember them. They will help you. These things will help you. I'm telling you. There will be time where your foundation, the rain will come, the storm will come. When the winds is going to blow and the storms of life is going to come, you need your house to be on that foundation called the Word of God that you'll be able to sustain and survive the storms of life. Looking at life from God's point of view. My brothers and my sisters, our faith and our trust in God, especially in times of challenge, in times of challenge, my brothers and my sisters, we ask God, we continue to trust in the Lord even when things are difficult, my brothers and my sisters, as I say, our circumstances may not always be clear. The more we keep on living, we are going to experience challenging. There will be some good things that will happen to us. And there will be some bad things that are going to happen too. But God promised to be with us through it all. God never promised that just because we are Christian, we are not going to experience the storms of life. We are going to experience some setbacks in our life. But does that change, God? Uh, you know, there is the story of Job in the Old Testament. This man who lost everything. So challenging to the place where the wife of Job came to Job and said, Job, you know, there's nothing. Just curse God and die. Look at you. Job said, my redeemer, my redeemer lives. His friends came and questioned his faith. His friend began to ask him questions and say, you must be a sinner. Because things like this cannot happen to a righteous person. You really must be a sinner. And you know, when we begin to ask this why question, sometimes we, we are in a place where we are challenged and we, we ask ourselves, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me? A Job kept his faith. Say to himself, my Redeemer lives. So like I've said to you, our faith in God, my brothers and my sisters, does not depend whether God give us what we want or God does not give us what we want. That's the test of our faith. Will you still continue to trust God? Yes, I will trust in the Lord. Yes, I'll still believe that God is able to do beyond what I ask and beyond what I imagine. I've heard stories about God. I've read, I've heard, and I've seen testimonies about God. God is able. I hope 
you and I will have the faith of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These three young men says to King Nebuchadnezzar that our God is able to deliver us from the fire. We all love that idea of being delivered from the fire. But listen to the statement of faith. Even if, even if, even if God does not deliver us from the fire, we will still worship our God. We will not compromise our faith. We will not question our faith. We are not going to bow down before your idol God. That's the kind of faith and trust we must have in the Lord. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, that we will be able to look at our circumstances and say, even if God does not move the mountain, even if God does not give me the miracle that I want, even if God does not answer my prayer, yes, my faith and my trust in the Lord, I will, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. When you look at life from God's point of view, you begin to understand. Listen to this. The Ecclesiastes chapter we read about the season of life. There is a time for everything. A season of life. There is a time to be born. And there is a time to die. It is a season, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal. My brothers and my sisters, a time to cry and a time to laugh. All these are part of our human experience. All these are part of our human experience. So, how do we look at the big picture? When we begin to look at things from an eternal perspective, eternal perspective. We focus on the how, on our spiritual growth, our relationship with God, instead of focusing on our material and temporal concerns. When we focus on the eternal, when we avoid self-centered perspective, We look at the big picture because the big picture tells me that God knows what is best for me. Come on, somebody. You know when you are driving your car? No one day I was driving my small car. It was just on a two lane going forward and the other lane is coming the other side. And there was a big truck in front of me. And I'm driving my small car. I did not see if there was another car coming over there. And I was in a hurry. I wanted to go fast. And every time I wanted to overtake that big truck, I was in that small car, my first car, very small, Chrysler LeBaron. You remember those cars? Chrysler, Le Baron. Oh, come on, somebody. It was a convertible. I don't care what you say. <laughs> Very small. And this big truck, every time I wanted to make a move to overtake the truck, and this man would come toward me, block me from going. Every time I tried to overtake the guy, he would come and then it will go this way. He did that twice. And every time he did it, another car passed by quickly. I try again, another car passed quickly there. Now I got the message. Because he was up there. He had a bigger view. He was seeing what was coming there. And me, I was down here. I was not able to see what was coming there. Until one time I noticed He's giving me the signal. He's telling me, it's okay. You can make the move. And then I begin to move in this lane. And the more I'm moving in this lane, he's going this way. He's telling me, it's okay, you can make the move. And I made the move. 
And when I was on the other side, I gave him the two light. I said, thank you. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, in our life here on earth, let us trust God. As we look at the big picture, understand that God knows what is best for us. God knows what is best for us. Yeah, we may not be granted all the desires of our heart. Maybe God will not be able to give us everything we want. But as we have that eternal perspective, oh, my brothers and my sisters, we live our life with that sense of gratefulness that we trust. God knows what is better for us. And that I believe. God knows what is best for me. That's why I trust in the Lord. I'll put my hands in the hands of God. And I'll trust him and say, God, guide my step because you know best. Oh, yes, my brothers and my sisters. In our study, we are studying something so powerful. You are not an accident. That each person is unique in this world. Each individual person is unique. That there is no mistake. The way you are, God created you. You are not an accident. There is a purpose and a calling upon your life that you are playing a significant role into the larger narrative of God's plan. Every individual, every person here on earth, in the big picture of God, your role, your contribution is so important, yet you are unique. Oh, come on, somebody. Scripture tells us even the number of our hair. God knows the number. And you understand, some of you have hair. <laughs> when you fix your hair and there is one falling down, yes, God knows about it. I am not an accident. Come on, I am not an accident. God knows me by my name. God knows you by your name. God knows you by your name. So there is that purpose and the calling upon each one of us to live that life with that sense of confidence and do not let other people's opinion define who you are. You are defined by who created you. And God the creator says, you are not an accident. I created you. Even before you were in the womb of your mother, God says, I knew about you. God says, I knew about you. Live your life with that sense of confidence. Yes. And for us, God's people, God, according to the book of Colossians, for God has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his son. God rescued us. From the dead end that is connected to sin. God set us up in the kingdom of his son. So we are loved. Yes. We are loved. That's the big picture. God's salvation is the big picture. God's glory is the big picture. God's will is the big picture. That's it. And when our life connect and fit into the greater purpose of God, yes, we are connected. This is why Christ taught us to say, when you pray, you say, Our Father which are in heaven, I'll always be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Come on, somebody. God's kingdom, thy will be done. So we live our life every day with that sense of God's kingdom, of God's purpose. And a reminder to all of us, we own nothing. Even the life that we have this morning, you own nothing. It has been given to you by grace alone. You are just a steward, a manager over everything that God has given you, beginning with the breath of life that you have today. So as you live your life, you live your life with that sense of gratefulness. You live your life with that sense of humility. Oh, yes, God has blessed you so you can be part of God's picture. Oh, yes, you fit. 
As you fulfill your destiny, as you discover what on earth are you here for, you are contributing toward that big picture. Yes, the greater purpose of God for all things. Work together for good to those who love God. In other words, all things. God, 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 God may not be responsible for everything that happened to us. But God is going to work everything together for our good. To bring about God's purpose. When we talk about what is good, when we say all things work together for the good, that goodness, the good we are talking about, we are talking about the greater purpose of God. Because that's how we move from the why to the how. Christian, as they ask why questions, they finish with how questions. Yes, we start with why. Christ says, why have you forsaken me on the cross? And he finished with how? Into thy hand I command my spirit. Christ understood. He came to save humanity. He came for a purpose. And his purpose was to save humanity. And that time was over. He said, into thy hand I command my spirit. In other words, let your will be done. We have heard Jesus Christ praying in Gethsemane and say, your will. Your will. Your will. This is what I believe. God's mercy, God's compassion, God's love renew themselves every morning. In the love of God and the compassion of God, there is provision there. Provision for our protection, provision for God to meet all our needs. Even, even when sometimes it will feel like we are crushed by life. Even in the midst of our disappointment, God is present. There is the mystery of pain. The mystery of losing. The mystery of disappointment. I pray whenever you experience that time, whatever you are going through, the wilderness experience in your life, that will not be an opportunity for you to be taken away from, from, from God. That will be an opportunity that will connect you to God. You know, this I have confidence because my life is in the hand of God. As your life is in the hands of God, I know nothing will separate us from the love of God. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Scripture says nothing shall separate us from the love of God. My disappointment, my loss, my pain, my gain. You know, there are people who, when they get more, they forget about God. There are people who they lose, they forget about God. Whatever season I may find myself in my life, as a child of God, encourage yourself and say, nothing will separate me from the love of God. This is how we move from why to how. How will this give glory to God? How will this give glory to God? All things will work together for good. Where is the good in my pain? Where is the good in my loss, in my disappointment? Sometimes you may not have that answer. You are going to live with that internal struggle. But if you are open to the possibilities of God, God will lead you and guide you. Yes, God will lead you as you discern your path into the bigger picture. God will guide your step. God promise, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. This I believe. And I encourage you this morning to join the songwriter who say, I will trust in the Lord.
I will trust in the Lord. No matter what comes my way, I will trust in the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let all of God's people say it, Amen. Amen. And the band will come forward, please.